Let's talk to Ricardo Evangelista. He's from Active Trades. Very good morning to you, Ricardo. Good morning, Nick. Right, let's talk trade sanctions. Um, Mr. Trump is making a few headlines again. What's going on there? Yes, um, so we've had uh, so far regarding the, the trade, so-called trade wars, we've had uh, the imposing of uh, tariffs on uh, aluminium and, uh, and other metals imports as well. And the most recent uh, chapter in this saga is the, um, the, the, the new development that came out yesterday regarding the uh, automobile imports. Yep. So, so uh, US officials are now looking into that subject and studying the possibility of imposing uh, restrictions or even adding tariffs onto the, the existing uh, ones for um, imports in, uh, in cars, basically, and car parts as well. Uh, the results of this have been uh, felt mainly this morning on uh, Asian equities. Yep. So we saw that uh, ja Japanese and other other local uh, other regional uh, equities uh, have suffered um, on what would otherwise have been a quiet day because the the publication of the minutes from the um, FOMC uh, Fed's uh, committee yesterday were uh, quite mild really i mean there, there was no um no they were quite dovish and to be honest yeah uh, there was no <coughs> indication that uh, a fourth interest rate rise would uh, would be occurring in this year and that would have been uh, a good uh, a good impulse for um, asian equities however with these uh, trade uh, talks trade war talks and instability and, and you never know what's going to happen one day President Trump says, yes, it's great. We have um, laid out uh, a good basis to establish uh, an agreement with our Chinese partners. The next day he says, oh, actually, maybe it may not be so good. Uh, it just sends out a tweet and everything goes off yep. in the rails again. So it's been hot and cold uh, regarding this, uh, this trade. Right. Uh, trade. In terms of crude oil, one-way traffic at the moment. Um, yes. Um, We've uh, we've witnessed in the last couple of weeks um, great uh, great dynamics uh, for for crude and Brent as well. Uh, Brent actually uh, almost reaching the eighty eighty dollars a barrel uh, level. Uh, crude just on seventy one, just above seventy one at the moment. Um, the rise has been altered um, recently because some um, some stocks uh, have actually. Um, been uh, more so there's been a sort of a stock taking for a, an inventory um, for oil and uh, it looks like it's actually better than what was expected so that halted in the rise of oil but um, all the geopolitics uh, surrounding this topic uh, are, are there to support further rises so we have um, the tension in uh, with with Iran uh, so Iran um, delivers 4% of the world's oil uh, per year, so uh, further American sanction, sanctions yep. on Iran <coughs> will um, tighten the supply of oil. Also, we have the situation in Venezuela as well, uh, which is also one of the major producers and members of the, of the OPEC organization. Um, we know that with President Maduro having won the election there again, um, it's likely that further American sanctions will be imposed and therefore there will be further restrictions on oil exports from Venezuela. So with the tightening of the, of the supply, we could see further, uh, further, upside. further upside. Turkish yeah. lira, interest rates. Yes, yes, big st the big story of today, uh, Turkish lira. Um, Turkey, like other emerging uh, economies as well, uh, is suffering because they are on the wrong side of the current cycle, yep. we can say. So the same could be said for Argentina as well, for Brazil, perhaps. Um, the situation in, Turk in Turkey is that uh, President Erdogan is a, is a populist, uh, so he was elected on the, on the populist agenda, so he's promising to give out uh, benefits to keep, uh, to keep the economy uh, growth uh, strong. Um, the problem is that Turkey... Um, has a uh, quite a, a high trade deficit and uh, is highly indebted as well and uh, all, all of this is accounted for in dollars right so uh, as we can see at this stage in economic cycle um, 
the US is raising interest rates, the dollar is strengthening, and this is really bad news for Turkey. Uh, inflation there is about 12% at the moment, and, uh, and with an outlook to rise even further. So this uh, obviously um, has driven investors away from Turkish lira, uh, which will have a, a vicious cycle effect, and, and so inflation will rise even further. So uh, today we saw that the, um, the Turkish central bank finally uh, decided to raise interest rates um, at a substantial pace, 300 basis yep. points, 3%. So interest rates now on 16%. Uh, and also there's been a, a clear statement from President Erdogan uh, reaffirming his will to adhere to, international, uh, to the international standard when, when it comes to monetary policy, business practice, etc. Uh, so it will be interesting to see. Uh, when it happens, it halted the drop of the lira against the dollar. But this morning we saw already that the dollar has recovered some terrain against the, the Turkish currency. So not sure if that will be enough. Understood. And finally, as a European, what are your thoughts on Italy at the moment? Uh, well, Italy, uh, new prime minister, uh, Conte. Um, so he's, uh, he's backed up by a, a very odd coalition of, uh, we could say, almost far right and far, far left. left. Yep. So the Liga North on the right and the uh, Five Star Movement um, on the left, both have uh, populist agendas. Um, there's some outrageous promises out there, something like giving 800 euros a month to every unemployed person, um, also cutting corporate tax on the on the Liga North side. Um, the cost for this is estimated to be around 70 to 80 billion euros a year. Uh, I'm not sure where they're going to get the money <laughs> for it. So. Um, Yes, may not be very good news for Europe and for the euro. So uh, at the moment, the euro seems to have reacted well to the, to the appointment of the prime minister. We'll probably see a period of a respite from this tension. Uh, but I think in the medium to long term, uh, it may be a storm brewing in there. Right. And, uh, and it'll be interesting to follow and potentially witness some negative re repercussions on the euro. On that note, Ricardo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Nick.